I'm Danny and welcome back to the channel. I made a video a while ago about the physics of why discs fly the way they do and it turns out that a lot of that stuff is just wrong. Um, so I figured I would, I went ahead and unlisted that one. You can find it if you have the link, but, um, I want to go, I wanted to go ahead and correct a lot of the things that I'm, uh, a lot of the mistakes that I made. And so, um, the, the biggest mistake that I made was how discs generate lift. And so I wanted to elaborate on that a little bit. I said that discs generate lift because of the Bernoulli principle where discs, where the wind going over the top is faster than the wind going over the bottom. That's just, that's not right. I mean, it might help a little bit, but the major reason why discs generate lift is because the wind is actually curved by the shape of the disc. So it flies straight at the front if the disc is going this way. And then because of the wing at the back is curved, it curves down. And that pushes up because the wind is, is moving down. It kind of pushes up on the bottom of the disc. And so that's what generates lift. Um, in airplane wings, they're also tilted backwards a little bit, and that exaggerates the effect. Uh, but in disc golf, that kills our, our uh, aerodynamics. It kills our forward momentum too. So we throw them flat and they actually don't need to generate that much lift. They still need to generate some lift, but not nearly much to, to, I don't know, support the weight of a lot of people in their packages, I guess, in cargo. I don't know. Okay. So, um, that's the big thing that I messed up about lift. The, uh, the other thing that I really wanted to talk about is why discs turn, why discs turn and why discs fade. Because I see a lot of people talk about lift. You could find a lot of academic papers actually on lift. There's one down in the, in the description that kind of talks about that. But there's not a lot about why discs will turn or why discs fade. And I think I have it figured out. But, I mean, if obviously if I'm wrong, let me know down in the comments. So um, the, the biggest difference that you'll notice, this is a felon. This is a very overstable felon. And this is a renegade. This is a very understable disc. If you look at their profiles side by side, what's the first thing that you notice? Probably that they're different colors, but the first thing that, that you should look at is that the wing on the felon, right? Like the leading edge here is a lot higher than the leading edge on the renegade. This is the renegade. This is the felon. So the felon is not going to direct as much wind over the top as the Renegade is because it's got a much lower nose. So based on what we've talked about so far, that would mean that the Renegade is going to generate more lift, right? Because it's going to have more air curving over and directed down at the back. The Felon is not going to generate nearly as much lift because the air is going down at the front. And we kind of see that hold true. Generally notice that your more understable discs are going to be glidier. The discs with more curve on the top, domier discs, are also glidier for the same reason. Um, but how does that make them turn or fade? How does that make this disc understable and this disc overstable? Well, the reason I think is because of upward and downward force on the front and the back of the disc. So when a disc is flying through the air, if this disc was flying through the air, not spinning, just flying through the air, and it wasn't changing angle for whatever reason, the air would push down on the front because it's got it's flowing over the top and also up on the back because the wind is curving down. So that kind of pushes this way on the disc, right? Now, discs aren't flying like this. They're flying, rotating like this. So this is kind of the interesting part. Um, when you apply a pressure that is perpendicular to the direction of rotation of a disc, it doesn't directly affect the disc. If a disc is not spinning and I push down on the front of it, the front drops, right? But if a disc is spinning, I'm going to see if I can do this, I don't know, and I push down on the front, the front isn't going to drop because I'm not. It, the disc isn't only moving down in the front, it's also moving to the side. So be, it, it multiplies those two directions, and that means that the right side will drop if a disc is spinning like this. The same thing happens if you push up on the back. Right, so hang on, let me get it spinning. I'll push down on the front. I don't know if I can even do this right. Ugh. You see that? <laughs> the right side dropped first. My right side, your left. Um, but I can't spin it the other way because my fingers don't work like that for some reason. So, um, but the same thing would happen if you pushed up on the back. If I spin it the same direction, whoa, and just push up on the back, the right side drops. So um, that's what's happening. That's what's causing discs to turn. Right, a downward fresh pressure on the front and an upward pressure on the back, because the disc is spinning, it flips to the right. Now, when a disc slows down, there's not a lot of, okay, when a disc is flying, there's not a lot of force that's stopping it from spinning, right? 
there's there's air. You could argue that when you're when you're flying through the air, it's getting resistance from the air going this way against the rotation, but the air is also going this way with the rotation. So it's not the 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 air resistance doesn't do a whole lot to slow down the spin. But what it does do is it what it does do a whole lot of is it slows down the forward momentum. It's not going to be moving forward as fast. It's going to start to slow down, and that's why it stops generating as much lift and kind of falls. Now, when it's falling, rather than pushing down on the front and up on the back, what's happening is, is the disc is moving forward and it's falling. So imagine it's flying this way. It's moving forward and it's falling. So that means that the air is effectively pushing up on the front, which is why the right side lifts. So if the disc is flying at you, spinning like a backhand for me, and falling, the right side is going to lift, and that moves the center of pressure over here and pushes the disc to the left. That causes it to fade. So that's why discs turn and why they fade, why they have glide, stuff like that. So let's compare that to an overstable disc. An overstable disc in comparison to an understable disc is not going to force as much air over the top and so it's not going to have as much downward pressure on the front or upward pressure on the back. And that means it's not going to change its angle as much. It's not going to turn. But also, when it starts to fall, it's going to have a much easier threshold, basically, to start changing its angle this way, to start fading. So that's why overstable discs turn less, fade less, and also glide less. So let's talk about spin now. So what spin does is uh, there's, a, there's a thing called, um, oh, what is it? I don't know, just gyroscopes, I guess. Gyroscopic stability, that's it. Something that is spinning has a lot of inertia going in that circle, right? Moving around whatever axis it's on. And if it's spinning, usually that's, that, that inertia, not usually, that spinning inertia always resists forces that change it, right? Because an object in motion wants to stay in motion, going the same direction. It doesn't want to, uh, it doesn't want to just stop moving for no reason. So a disc that is, uh, that is spinning is going to resist any change in angle because it has that inertia moving it around. So if a disc is not spinning and I just throw it up in the air, it can change angles all it wants, right? It can, it can flip this way, flip that way, all kinds of stuff. But as soon as I spin it, it makes it a lot harder for it to change angles. See how it kind of maintains the angle? The frame rate on this camera is terrible, and I apologize. This video is recorded live, by the way, at uh, youtube.com slash Danny Disc. Come hang out and watch me be bad at video games. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's what spinning does to a disc. It makes it not want to change its angle. So you might think that that would make it turn less, and you'd be right. But that also means it wants to fade less. So that's why uh, a very narrow diameter disc, like a putter, tends to fly really straight. Because, I mean, other reasons too, but because it's spinning so much, it's not going to, uh, because that narrow diameter lets it spin faster, it's not going to turn as much or fade as much. It's going to resist that turn and fade because of uh, the gyroscopic stability. Now... I talked about overmold discs a little bit in my last video, and let me start out by saying, throw whatever discs you like, <laughs> right? I'm a firm believer that every company makes good discs. You should throw the company that you want to support. If you're a big fan of a player on tour, you should probably have some of their, uh, their tour series discs or fundraiser signature discs, whatever they are. You should probably have some of those. And if you like the way a plastic feels, that's a good reason to buy a disc. If a, if a company supports uh, your local tournaments, that's a good reason to buy those discs. Really, whatever. But uh, I will say I don't think overmold discs are inherently better than any other discs. And here's why. If something is rotating and you add more weight farther, or you or not add weight, but you move weight from the center towards the outside, that's going to slow down its rotation. That's just a fact. If you're spinning with your arms tight and you spread out your arms, you're going to rotate slower. And so the uh, overmold discs, if you throw them the same way that you throw a normal drive without hurting your form in order to throw them with more rotation, that's going to cause them to rotate less out of your hand. But also, they're going to maintain that rotation longer. So because they're, uh, but effectively, they're going to have the same amount of inertia because they have more weight around the outside. So it takes more effort to get them moving 
but they're just moving slower because they're heavier. But they're also going to be rotating roughly the same by the end of the throw because they maintain their speed a little bit longer. So it's it doesn't have a huge effect on how much they turn or fade or whatever. I mean, so, so basically throw whatever discs you want, all that to say. Uh, something I didn't talk about yet is um, beating in discs. This is something that I... I can find a few sources kind of talking about it, but this was kind of a, a light bulb moment to me. So when I have a video link down in the description talking about uh, golf ball dimples. If you, if you know about golf balls, I guess, uh, you know they have dimples on them, if you've seen a golf ball, I guess. If, and, and when they're flying, the dimples mean that the ball goes a lot farther. And the reason for that is because it reduces drag. If the, uh, if the ball didn't have dimples as it's flying, the air would kind of, okay, imagine this is a ball. The air splits and then kind of just goes straight off the back. And that creates a low pressure zone behind it if it's flying this way. And that slows it all down, slows the ball down. But if it has dimples, then that creates an area of uh, like a layer kind of of turbulent air around the ball. And that means that the air likes to stick to that turbulent layer so it comes together towards the end and that reduces that area of low pressure and it means that the the ball can fly a lot farther has a lot less drag so i promise this is about disc golf not golf <laughs> so a golf disc that is brand new has a very smooth rim and the rim is the part that gets the brunt of the uh, the friction from the air right so it has a very smooth rim so it's not going to have a lot of turbulence around here so for, a, uh, for an understable disc, I'll just keep using this one, that means that the air is going to come over and kind of go down, let's say, at an exa at, for example, at an angle about like this. Okay, but now say that the disc is beat in. It has a lot, of, uh, a lot of chunks taken out of it and little nicks and scratches. All of those bumps create a layer of turbulent air around the rim of the disc, I think. And so what that does is because then the air coming over the top of it wants to stick to that same layer of turbulent air that the air does coming around the golf ball, right? Coming over the end, it wants to stick to that layer of turbulent air. And so it sticks a little bit. And rather than coming off at this angle, it comes off at a little bit of a steeper angle. And what that does is it pushes up more on the back of the disc and that causes it to turn more. So that's why I think uh, beat in discs turn more. But uh, this video is getting a little bit long, so I guess um, that's just my uh, that's just my thoughts on why discs fly the way they do. Do we have any any questions from the chat? Uh, someone asks, is it true that more overstable drivers or overstable drivers are more controllable than understable drivers at the cost of distance? I think so because they glide less, right? Because they generate less lift. That means that they're going to be just more consistent because as a disc kind of generates that lift, it can cause a lot of variability down the line. It just means, uh, I don't know, it, it's like throwing a, a golf ball at something versus throwing a ping pong ball at something. It's just going to get to the ground, I guess not get to the ground faster. In a vacuum, it would, but like it just, uh, you know, it, it helps you to place the shot a little bit better and it reduces a lot of variability. Any other questions? I don't see any. All right. So uh, let me know what I got wrong down in the comments. I'll also leave uh, links about the gyroscopic precession, about like the forces that are applied 90 degrees to where the, the force is felt, I guess. Um, there's a, I'll also link a, a um, what's the word for it? I want to say it's like a, a peer reviewed, but it might just be a, an academic thing a paper about um why discs are generate lift and how they do it which talks about how the air going over the top creates a downward force at the back uh, or an upward force at the back and then uh, oh, there's a reddit post talking about the same thing and then i'll link the video about uh, golf ball dimples as well so um yeah let me know what you think of this video let me know down in the comments if i got anything wrong uh come check out the youtube stream at youtube.com slash danny disc and uh always remember slow is smooth and smooth is far